Welcome to the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, before we get started with, with the Bible study for this week, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and to guide us. Father God, we thank you so much for the ability to be together, to study your word. We know your word is faithful and true because you are faithful and true. And we thank you for today and every day because we know every day is a gift from you. You're an awesome, amazing father. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us and guide us and direct us in today's lesson. Open the eyes of our heart, open the ears of our heart, that we can be receptive to your holy word and show us what it is that we need to grasp from this week's lesson so we can incorporate it into our being and our walk with you. We give you all our praise and all honor and glory belongs to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Well, we're continuing with the English Standard Version of the Bible. And we are reading the book of Jeremiah currently. And we are going to conclude the book of Jeremiah this week, reading chapters 39 to 52. And we're going to get started with that because that there's a lot to cover and then we will recap Jeremiah. Chapter 39, the fall of Jerusalem. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. Now you remember, Jeremiah kept prophesying and warning them, turn back, turn back. Um, but then he was told, you know, basically to let them know that they need to surrender and that their lives would be saved, that judgment has now come because they had not turned back. And God had sent, God always sent prophets ahead of time to, to warn the people. And we know that this is the Southern kingdom and the kingdoms of the, the, the tribes that split up, the 12 tribes of Israel had split up into two kingdoms. And this is the southern kingdom that we're talking about now, the, the kingdom of Judah. So um, actually the, the other kingdom was the kingdom of Israel and they had gone into captivity with Assyria long before this. In the 11th year of Zedekiah in the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, a breach was made in the city. Then all the officials of the king of Babylon came and sat in the middle gate. Nergai, Nergai, Sir, at Ezer of Samgar, Nebu, Sir, Sekim, the, the Reb Seris, Nergal, Sir, Ezer, the Reb Mag, with all the rest of the officers of the king of Babylon. When Zedekiah, king of Judah, and all the soldiers saw them, they fled, going out of the city at night by way of the king's garden, through the gate between the two walls, and they went towards the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, and he passed sentence on him. The king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah at Riblah before his eyes, and the king of Babylon slaughtered all the nobles of Judah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains to take him to Babylon. The Chaldeans burned the king's house and the house of the people and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then, then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried into exile to, to Babylon the rest of the people who were left in the city, those who had deserted to him and the people who, who remained. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left in the, in the land of, of Judah some of the poor people who owned nothing and gave them vineyards and, and fields at the same time. The Lord delivers Jeremiah Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave command concerning Jeremiah through Nebuchadnezzar, the, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him, look after him well, and do him no harm, but deal with him as he tells you. So Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, 
Nebush is then the Reb Zeres, Nergel, Seizer, the Reb Mag, and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon sent and took Jeremiah from the court of the guard. They entrusted him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, that he should take him home, so he lived among the people. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the guard. Go and say to Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will fulfill my word against this city for harm and not for good, and they shall be accomplished before you on that day. But I will deliver you on that day, declares the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely save you, and you shall not fall by the sword, but you shall have your life as a prize of war, because you have put your trust in me, declares the Lord. Chapter 40 Jeremiah remains in Judah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah when he took him bound in chains along with all the captives of Jerusalem and Judah who were being exiled to Babylon. The captain of the guard took Jeremiah and said to him, The Lord your God pronounced this disaster against this place. The Lord has brought it about and has done as he said, because you sinned against the Lord and did not obey his voice. This thing has come upon you. Now behold, I release you today from the chains on your hands. If it seems good to you to come with me to Babylon, come, and I will look after you well. But if it seems wrong to you to come with me to Babylon, do not come. See, the whole land is before you. Go wherever you think it, it, it good and right to go. If you remain, then return to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, son of Shephan, whom the king of Babylon appointed governor of the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people. Or go wherever you think it is right to go. So the captain of the guard gave him an allowance of food and a present and let him go. Then Jeremiah went to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, at Mizpah, and lived with him among the people who were left in the land. When all the captains of the forces in the open country and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, governor in the land, and had committed to him men, women, children, those of the poorest of the land who had not been taken into exile to Babylon, they went to Gedaliah, Gedaliah at Mizpah. Ishmael the son of Nethaniah, Jonathan the son of Perei, Sarai, the son of Chanhumeth, the son of Ephei, the Nephethite, Net uh, Jezaniah, the son of the Machathite, they and their men. Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, swore to them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. As for me, I will dwell at Mizpah to represent you before the Chaldeans who will come to us. But as for you, gather wine and summer fruits and oil and store them in your vessels and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Judeans were, who were in Moab and among the Ammonites and, and in Edom and in other lands heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant in Judah and had appointed Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, son of Shepham, Shepham, as governor over them, then all the Judeans returned from all the places to which they had been driven and came to the land of Judah, to Gedaliah at Mizpah, and they gathered wine and summer fruits in great abundance. Now, Johanan, and I said that wrong earlier, I apologize, the son of Kare, and that's spelled K-A-R-E-A-H, and all the leaders of the forces in the open country came to Gedaliah at Mizpah and said to him, do you know that? Baalus, the king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to take your life. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, would not believe them. Then Johanan, the son of Kare, spoke secretly to Gedaliah at Mizpah, Please let me go and strike down Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and no one will know it. Why should he take your life so that all the Judeans who are gathered about you would be scattered and the remnant of Judah would perish? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, said to Johanan, the son of Kerai, You shall not do this thing, for you are speaking, speaking falsely of Ishmael. However, here we go. Chapter 41, Gedaliah is murdered. In the seventh month, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, son of 
Elishama of the royal family, one of the chief officers of the king, came with, two, with ten men to Gedalia, the son of Ahikam, at Mizpah. As they ate bread together there at Mizpah, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and the ten men with him, rose up and struck down Gedalia, the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, with a sword and killed him, whom the king of Babylon had appointed governor in the land. Ishmael also struck down all the Judeans who were with Gedalia at Mizpah and the Chaldean soldiers who happened to be there. On the day after the murder of Gedalia, before anyone knew of it, 80 men arrived from Shechem and Shiloh and Samaria with their beards shaved and their clothes torn and their bodies gashed, bringing grain offerings and incense to present at the temple of the Lord. And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, came out from Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he came. As he met them, he said to, to them, Come in to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. When they came into the city, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and the men with him slaughtered them and cast them into a cistern. But there were ten men among them who said to Ishmael, Do not put us to death, for we have stores of wheat, barley, oil, and honey hidden in the fields. So he refrained and did not put them to death with their companions. Now the cisterns into which Ishmael had thrown all of the bodies of the men whom he had struck down along with Gedaliah was the large cistern that King Asa had made for defense against Basha, king of Israel. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, filled it with the slain. Then Ishmael took captive all the rest of the people who were in Mithah, the king's daughters, and all the people who left, who were left at Mithah whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, took, the, took them captive and set out to cross over to, to the Ammonites. But when Johanan, the son of Kerry, and all the leaders of the forces with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done, they took all their men and went to fight against Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah. They came upon him at the great pool that is in Gibeon. When all the people who were with Ishmael saw Johanan, the son of Karai, and all the leaders of the forces with him, they rejoiced. So all the people whom Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah turned around and came back and went to Johanan, the son of Kerai. But Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, escaped from Johanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. Then Johanan, the son of Kerai, and all the leaders of the forces with him took from Mizpah all the rest of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, after he had struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, soldiers, women, children, and eunuchs, whom Johanan brought back from Gibeon. And they went and stayed at Gareth, Kim, Kimham, which is spelled C-H-I-M-H-A-M, near Bethlehem, intending to go to Egypt because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them because Ishmael, the son of Nathaniel, uh, and the son of Nethaniah, I'm sorry, had struck down Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Warning against going to Egypt. Now this is chapter 42. Then all the commanders of the forces of Johanan, the son of Keri, Keriah, I'm sorry, and Jesaniah, the son of Hoshiah and all the people from the least to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Let our plea for mercy come before you and pray to the Lord for the Lord your God for us for all this remnant because we are left with but a few as your eyes see us. That the Lord your God show us the way we should go and that and the thing that we should do. Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray to the Lord your God according to your request. Whatever the Lord answers you, I will tell you. I will keep nothing back from you. And they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act according to all the word with which the Lord your God sends you to us. Whether it is good or bad, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we are sending you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. At the end of ten days, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he summoned Johanan the son of Kerai, and all the commanders of the forces who were with him, and all the people from the least to the greatest, and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me, to present your plea, your mercy before him, 
If you will remain in this land, then I will build you up and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I relent of the disaster that I did to you. Do not fear the king of Babylon of whom you are afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord. For I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy that he may have mercy on you and let you remain in your own land. But if you say, we will not remain in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God and saying, no, we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall not see war or hear the sound of the trumpet or be hungry for bread and we will not, and we will dwell there. Then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you set your faces to enter Egypt and go live there, then the sword that you fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine of which you are afraid shall follow close after you to, to Egypt, and there you shall die. All the men who set their faces to go to Egypt to live there shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. They shall have no remnant or survivor from the disaster that I will bring upon them. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my wrath were poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my wrath will be poured out on you when you go to Egypt. You shall become an execration, a horror, a curse, a taunt, and a taunt. You shall see this place no more. The Lord has said to you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Know for a certainty that I have warned you this day that you have gone astray at the cost of your lives. For you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us, for the Lord our God, and whatever the Lord our God says, declare to us, and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you. But you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God in anything that he sent me to tell you. Now therefore know for certainty that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go to live. Jeremiah is taken to Egypt. You know, that's that's an interesting title for chapter 43. So let's see what happens. When Jeremiah finished speaking to all the people, all these words of the Lord their God with which the Lord their God had sent to him, sent to them, Azariah the son of Hoshiah, Hoshiah and Johanan the son of Kareah, and all the insolent men said to Jeremiah, You are telling a lie. The Lord our God did not send you to say, Do not go to Egypt to live there. But Baruch the son of of Marian has set you against us to deliver us into the hands of the Chaldeans that they may kill us or take us into exile in Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Kare, and all the commanders of the forces and all the people did not obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Kare, and all the commanders of the forces took all the remnant of Judah who had returned to live in the land of Judah from all the nations to which they had been driven. The men, the women, the children, the princesses, and every person whom Nebuzaradan, and the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, son of Shaphan, also Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neri. So they took, they just took them, actually, there. Um, he didn't go, go because he wanted to go. And they came into the land of Egypt, for they did not obey the voice of the Lord. And they arrived at Tep Tepenhenes. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, T Tepenhenes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Getting tongue tied today. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah at Tepanese Take in your hand large stones and hide them in the mortar in the pavement that is in the entrance at, to Pharaoh's palace at Tepanese in the sight of the men of Judah and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal canopy over them. He shall come and strike the land of Egypt giving over to the pestilence those who are doomed to the pestilence to captivity, those who are doomed to captivity, and to the sword, those who are doomed to the sword. I shall kindle a fire in the temples of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captive. And he shall clean the land of Egypt as a shepherd cleans his cloak of vermin, and he shall go away from there in peace. He shall break the obelisk of the Heliopolis, which is in the land of Egypt, in the temples of the gods of Egypt, he shall burn with fire. Judgment for idolatry, chapter 44. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the Judeans who lived in the land of Egypt at Migdol, at Tephanes, at Memphis, and in the land of Paphros. Thus says the Lord, 
How close, the God of Israel, you have seen all the disaster that I brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. Behold, this day they are a desolation and no one dwells in them because of the evil that they committed, provoking me to anger in that they went to make offerings and serve other gods that they knew not, neither they nor you nor their fathers. Yet I persistently sent to you all my servants, the prophets, saying, Oh, do not do this abomination that I hate. But they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their evil and make no offerings to other gods. Therefore my wrath and my anger were poured out and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a waste and a desolation as at this day. And now, thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, why do you commit this great evil against yourselves to cut off from you man and woman, infant and child from the midst of Judah, leaving you no remnant? Why do you provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, making offerings to other gods in the land of Egypt where you have come to live so that you may be cut off and become a curse and a taunt among all the nations of the earth? Have you forgotten the evil of your fathers, the evil of the kings of Judah, the evil of, the king, of, of their wives, your own evil, and the evil of your wives, which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They have not humbled themselves even to this day, nor have they feared, nor walked in my law and my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for harm to cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah who have set their faces to come to the land of Egypt to live, and they shall all be consumed in the land of Egypt. They shall fall by the sword and by famine. They shall be consumed from the least to the greatest. They shall die by the sword and by famine, and they shall become an oath, a horror, a curse, and a taunt. I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem with a sword, with famine, and with pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah who have come to live in the land of Egypt shall escape or survive or return to the land of Judah to which they desire to return to dwell there. For they shall not return except some fugitive. Then all of the men who knew that their wives had made offerings to other gods and all the women who stood by a great assembly, all the people who lived in, in Papyrus in the land of Egypt answered Jeremiah, As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. But we will do everything that we have vowed, making make offerings to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings to her as we did both we and our fathers our kings and our officials in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem for, for then we had plenty of food and prospered and saw no disaster but since we left off making offerings to the queen of heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine and the women said, when we have made offerings to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, was it without our husband's approval that we made cakes for her, bearing her image and poured out drink offerings to her? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, men and women, all the people who had given him this answer, as for the offerings that you offered in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your officials and the people of the land. Did not the Lord remember them? Did it not come back into his mind? The Lord could no longer bear your evil deeds and the abominations that you committed. Therefore, your land has become a desolation and a waste and a curse without inhabitant. As it is this day, it is because you, have, you made offerings and because you sinned against the Lord and did not obey the voice of the Lord or walk in, in his law and in his statutes and in his testimonies that this disaster had happened to you at, as at this day. Jeremiah said to all the people and all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all of you, Judah, who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you and your wives have declared with your mouths and, and, and have fulfilled it with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have made to make offerings to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings to her. Then confer, confirm your vows and perform your vows. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all of you, Judah, who dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be invoked by the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, As the Lord God lives, behold, I am watching over them for disaster and not for good. All the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword 
and by famine until there is an end of them. And those who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah, few in number, and all the remnant of Judah who came to the land of Egypt to live shall know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This shall be the sign of you, declares the Lord, that I will punish you in this place in order that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for harm. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will give Pharaoh, Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who was his enemy and sought his life. Message to Baruch, and this is chapter 45, the word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch, the son of Neri, Ner, Neriah, when he spoke, when he wrote those words in a book at the dictation of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch, you said, Woe is me, but for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. Thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built I am breaking down, and what I have planted I am plucking up, that, that is, the whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Seek them not, for behold, I am bringing disaster upon all flesh, declares the Lord. But I will give you your life as a prize of war in all the places to which you may go. Chapter 46, Judgment on Egypt, the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah, the prophet, concerning the nations about Egypt, concerning the army of Pharaoh, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates at Carchemish, and which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, defeated in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare buckler and shield and advance for battle. Harness the horses, mount O horsemen, take your stations with your helmets, polish your spears, put on armor. Why have I seen it? They are dismayed and have turned backward. Their warriors are beaten down and have fled in haste. They do not look back. Terror on every side, declares the Lord. The swift cannot flee away, nor the warrior escape in the north by the river Euphrates. They have stumbled and fallen. Who is this rising like the Nile, the, like rivers whose waters surge? Egypt rises like the Nile, like rivers whose waters sur surge. He said, I will rise, I will cover the earth, I will destroy cities and their inhabitants. Advance, O horses, and rage, O chariots. Let the warriors go out, men of Cush and Put, who handle the shield, men of Lud, skilled in handling the bow. That day is the day of the Lord, God of hosts, the day of vengeance, to avenge himself on his foes. The sword shall devour and be sated, and drink its fill of their blood. For the Lord God of hosts holds a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain you have used many medicines. There is no healing for you. The nations have heard of your shame, and the earth is full of your cry. For warrior has stumbled against warrior. They have both fallen together. The word of the word that the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to strike the land of Egypt, declare in Egypt and proclaim in Migdal, proclaim in Memphis, in Memphis, I'm sorry, in Memphis and Tethanes, uh, say, stand ready and be prepared for the sword shall devour around you. Why are your mighty ones face down? They do not stand because the Lord thrust them down. He made many stumble, and they fell, and they said one to another, Arise, and let us go back to our own people and to the land of our birth, because of the sword of the oppressor. Call the name of Pharaoh the king, king of Egypt, noisy one who, let, who lets the error go by. As I live, declares the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, like Tabor among the mountains, and, and like Carmel by the sea, shall one come. Prepare yourself, baggage for exile of inhabitants of Egypt. For Memphis shall become a waste, a ruin without inhabitant. A beautiful heifer is Egypt, but a biting fly from the north has come upon her. Even her hired soldiers in her midst are like fattened calves, yet they have turned and fled together. They did not stand. For the day of their calamity has come upon them, the time of their punishment. She makes a sound like a serpent gliding away, for her enemies march in force. And come against her with axes like those who fell trees. They shall cut down her forest, declares the Lord, though it is impenetrable, because there are more numerous 
they are more numerous than locusts. They are without number. The daughter of Egypt shall be put to shame and shall be delivered into the hand of the people from the north. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, said, Behold, I am bringing punishment upon Ammon of, of Thebes and Pharaoh and Egypt and her gods and her kings upon Pharaoh and those who trust in him. I will deliver them into the hand of those who seek their life, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Afterward, Egypt shall be inhabited as in the days of old, declares the Lord. But fear not, O Jacob, my servant, nor be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from far, far away, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and have quiet and ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, declares the Lord, for I am with you. I will make a full end of the nations, of all the nations to which I have driven you. But of you I will not make a full end. I will discipline you in just measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. Judgment on the Philistines, and this is chapter 47. Now, this is the judgment of the nations that, that came against Israel as well. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the Philistines before Pharaoh struck down Gaza. Thus says the Lord, Behold, waters are rising out of the north and shall become an overflowing torrent. They shall overflow the land and all that fills it, the city and those who dwell in it. Men shall cry out and every inhabitant of the land shall wail at the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his stallions, at the crushing of his chariots, at the rumbling of their wheels, the fathers look not back to their children, so feeble are their hands, because of the day that is coming to destroy all the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Sidon, every helper that remains. For the Lord is destroying the Philistines, the remnant of the coastland of Kaptur. Baldness has come upon Gaza, Ashkelon has perished, a remnant of their valley. How long will you guess yourselves, uh, sword of the Lord? How long till you are quiet? You put yourself into your scabbard rest and be still. How can it be quiet when the Lord has given it a charge against Ashkelon and against the seashore? He has appointed it. Judgment on Moab. Now this is chapter 48 concerning Moab. Moab. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, woe to Nebo, for it is laid waste. Kiriath, Kiriathim is put to shame. It is taken. The fortress is put to shame and broken down. The renown of Moab is no more. In Heshbon they plan disaster against her. Come, let us cut her off from being a nation. You also, O, o madman, shall be brought to silence. The sword shall pursue you. A voice, a cry from Horonayim, desolation and great destruction. Moab is destroyed. Her little ones have made a cry, for as the accent of Luhith, they go up weeping. For at the descent of Horonayim, they have heard the distressed cry of destruction. Flee, save yourselves. You'll be like a juniper in the desert, for because you trusted in your works and your treasures, you also shall be taken, and Chemosh shall go into exile with his priests and his officials. The destroyer shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley shall perish, and the, and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord has spoken. Give wings to Moab, for she would fly away. Her cities shall become a desolation with no inhabitant in them. Cursed is he who does the work of the Lord with slackness, and cursed is he who keeps back his sword from bloodshed. Moab has been at ease from his youth and has settled on his dregs. He has not been empty from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into exile, so his taste remains in him, and his scent is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I shall send to him power, pour, pourers, I'm sorry, who will pour him and empty his vessels and break his jars into pieces. Then Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed at of Bethel, their confidence. How do you say, we are warriors and mighty men of war, the destroyer of Moab and his cities has come up, and the choices of his young men have gone down to slaughter, declares the king whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near at hand, and his affliction hastens swiftly. Grief for him, all you who are around him, and all you who know his name. Say, how the mighty scepter is broken, the glorious staff. Come down from your glory and sit on the parched ground, O inhabitant of Zeban. 
For the destroyer of Moab has come, upon, come against you. He has destroyed your strongholds. Stand by the way and watch, O oh, inhabitant of uh, Aror, you know, A-R-O-E-R. Ask him who flees and her who escapes. Say what has happened. Moab is put to shame, for it is broken while wail and cry. Tell it beside the Arnon that Moab is laid waste. Judgment has come upon the tableland, upon Holon, and Jaza and Mepha. Mepha, I'm sorry, that's, those are tongue, tie, tongue twisters there. And Debon and Nebo and Beth Diblathon and Kiriathon and Beth Gamal and Beth Mion and Kiriath and Bozra and all the cities of the land of Moab far and near. The horn of Moab is cut off and his arm is broken, declares the Lord. Make him drunk because he magnified himself against the Lord so that, that so that Moab shall wallow in his vomit, and he, too, shall be held in derision. Was not Israel a derision to you? Was he found among thieves? That whenever you spoke to him, spoke to him, you wagged your head? Leave the cities and, and dwell in the rock, O inhabitants of Moab. Be like the dove that nests in the sides of the mouth of the gorge. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his loftiness, his pride and his arrogance, and his haughtiness of his heart. I know his insolence, declares the Lord. His boasts are false, his deeds are false. Therefore I wail for Moab, I cry out for all Moab. For the men of Kirharaseth I mourn. More than for Jazer I weep for you, O vine of Sibma. Your branches passed over the sea, reached to the sea of Jazer. On your, on your summer fruits and your grapes, the destroyer has fallen. Gladness and joy have been taken away from the fruitful land of Moab. I have made the wine cease from the wine presses. No one treads them with, sh with shouts of joy. The shout shouting is not the shout of joy. From the outcry at Heshbon, even to Elile, as far as Jehaz, they utter their voice from Zor to Hornayim, Hor I'm sorry, and Eglath Shelashiah. For the waters of Nimran also have become desolate. And I will bring to an end in Moab, declares the Lord, him who offers sacrifices in the high places and makes offerings to his God. And that's little, that's spelled, that's not in capitals. It's, it's, it's all lowercase in uh, It is the word God. Therefore, my heart moans for Moab like a flute. And my heart moans like a flute for the men of Kirharaseth. Therefore the riches they have gained have perished, for every head is shaved and every beard cut off. On all the hands are gashes around the waist is sackcloth. On all the housetops of Moab and in the squares there is nothing but lamentation. And lamentation really means mourning. For I have broken Moab like a vessel for which no one cares, declares the Lord. How it is broken, how they wail, how Moab has turned his back, in shame, so Moab has become a derision and a horror to all that are around him. For thus says the Lord, Behold, one shall fly swiftly like an eagle and spread his wings against Moab. The city shall be taken and a stronghold seized. The heart of the warriors of Moab shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains. Moab shall be destroyed and be no longer a people because he magnified himself against the Lord. Terror, pit, and snare are before you, O inhabitant of Moab, declares the Lord. He who flees from the, ter the terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in, in the snare. For I will bring these things upon Moab, the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. In the shadow of Heshbon, fugitives stopped without strength, for fire came out from Heshbon, flame from the house of Sihon. It has destroyed the forehead of Moab, the crown of the sons of Tumult, woe to you, O Moab. The people of Chemosh are undone, for your sons have been taken captive and your daughters into captivity. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the latter days, declares the Lord. Thus far is the judgment on Moab. Chapter 49, Judgment on Ammon. Concerning the Ammonites, thus says the Lord, has Israel no son? Has he left no heir? Why then has Milcom dispossessed Gad? and his people settled in its cities. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, 
when I will cause the battle cry to be heard against Rabbah of the Ammonites. It shall become a desolate mound, and its villages shall be burned with fire. Then, then Israel shall dis dispossess those who dispossessed him, says the Lord. Well, O Heshbon, for, for Aya is laid waste. Cry out, O daughters of Rabbah. Put on sackcloth, lament, and run to and fro among the hedges, for Milcom shall go into exile with his priests and his officials. Why do you boast of your valleys, O faithless daughter, who trusted in her treasures, saying, Who will come, a, come against me? Behold, I will bring terror upon you, declares the Lord God of hosts, from all who are around you. And you shall be driven out, every man straight before him, with none to gather the fugitives. But afterward I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites, declares the Lord, judgment on Edom, concerning Edom. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Is wisdom no more in Teman? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan. For I will bring calamity. I will bring the calamity of Esau upon them, the time when I punish him. If great gatherers come to you, would they not leave glean gleanings? If thieves came by night, would they not destroy only enough for themselves? But I have stripped Esau bare, I have uncovered his hiding places, and he is not able to conceal himself. His children are destroyed, and his brothers and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your fatherless children, I will keep them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, if those who did not deserve to drink the cup must drink it, will go unpunished. You shall not go unpunished, but you, you must drink. For I have sworn by myself, declares the Lord, that Basra shall become a horror, a taunt, a waste, and a curse and all their cities shall be perpetual waste. I have heard a message from the Lord, an envoy, an envoy has been sent among the nations. Gather yourselves together and come against her and rise up for battle. For behold, I will make you small among the nations, despised among mankind. The horror you inspire has deceived you, and the pride of your heart, you who live in the clefts of the rocks, who hold the height of the hill. Though you make your nest is High as the eagles, I will bring you down from there, declares the Lord. Edom shall become a horror. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of all its disasters. And when Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities were overthrown, says the Lord, no man shall dwell there, no man shall sojourn in her. Behold, like a lion coming up from the jungle of the Jordan against the perennial pasture, I will suddenly make him run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan that the Lord has made against Edom, and the purpose is that he has formed against the inhabitants of Teman. Even the little ones of the flock shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at, at their fate. At the sound of their, their fall, the earth shall tremble. The sound of their cry shall be heard at the Red Sea. Behold, one shall mount up and fly swiftly like an eagle and spread his wings against Basra, and the heart of the warriors of Edom shall be in that day like the heart of a woman in her birth pains. Now remember, Edom, when uh, Nebuchadnezzar was, was actually coming up against Jerusalem, Edom, Edom actually helped and assisted the Chaldeans in attacking the city, uh, Edom has also did not let the let the children of Israel pass through uh, in the wilderness. Um, a lot of these did not; they 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 were not helpful uh, at all, and had been enemies. and And um, the children of Israel had been fighting for years against a lot of a lot of these. Judgment on Damascus concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are confounded, for they have heard bad news. They melt in fear. They are troubled like the sea that cannot be quiet. Damascus has become feeble. She turned to flee, and panic seized her. Anguish and sorrow, sorrows have taken hold of her as of a woman in labor. How is the famous city not forsaken, the city of my joy? Therefore, her young men shall fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed. In that day, de declares the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of in the wall of Damascus, and it shall devour the devour the stronghold holds of Ben Hadad. Judgment on Kedar and Hazar concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazar that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, struck, struck, 
struck down. Thus says the Lord, rise up, advance against Kedar. Destroy the people of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall be taken. Their curtains and all their goods. Their camels shall be led away from them. And men shall cry to them, terror on every side. Flee, wander far away, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Hazor, declares the Lord. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has made a plan against you and formed a purpose against you. Rise up against Rise up, advance against a nation at ease that dwells securely, declares the Lord, that has no gates or bars, that dwells alone. Their camels shall become plunder, their herds of livestock a spoil. I will scatter to every wind those who cut the corners of their hair, and I will bring their calamity from every side of them, declares the Lord. Hazar shall become a haunt of jackals, an everlasting waste. No man shall dwell there. No man shall so sojourn in her. Judgment on Elam, and that's E-L-A-M. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet concerning Elam, in the beginning of the, of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Sorry, I had to pause there. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the main state of their might, and I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and I will scatter them to all the winds and there shall be no nation to which those driven out of Elam shall, shall not come. I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those who seek their life. I will bring disaster upon them. My fierce anger declares the Lord. I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them, and I will set my throne in Elam and destroy their king and officials, declares the Lord. But in the latter days I will restore the fortunes of Elam, declares the Lord. Chapter 15. 50. Judgment on Babylon. The word that the Lord spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet, declare among the nations and proclaim, set up a banner and proclaim, conceal it not, and say, Babylon is taken, Bel is put to shame, Merodach is dismayed, her images are put to shame, her idols are dismayed. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it. Both man and beast shall flee away. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come, and they shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, with faces turned toward it, saying, Come. Let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forsaken their fold. All, all who found them devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord, their habitation of righteousness, the Lord, the hope of their fathers flee from the midst of Babylon and go out into the land of the Chaldeans and be as male goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like skilled warrior, like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered, and all who plunder her shall be stated declares the Lord. Though you rejoice, though you exult, O plunderers of my heritage, though you frolic like a heifer in the pasture, and nay, like stallions, your mother shall be utterly shamed, and she who bore you shall be disgraced. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, she shall not be inhabited, but shall be in utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled and hissed because of all her wounds. Set yourselves in a, an array against Babylon all around. All you who bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Raise a shout against her all around. She has surrendered. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls are thrown down, for this is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance on her due to her as she has done. Cut off from Babylon the sower and the one who handles the sickle in the time of harvest, because the sword of the oppressor, every one shall turn to his own people, and every one shall flee to his own land. Israel is a hunted sheep driven away by lions. First the 
king of Assyria de devoured him, and now at last Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has gnawed his bones. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing punishment on the king of Babylon and his land. As I punish the king of Assyria, I will restore Israel to his pasture, and he shall feed on Carmel and in Bashan. And his desire shall be satisfied in the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, iniquity shall be sought in Israel, and there shall be none. And sin in Judah, and none shall be found, for I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Go up against the land of Marathon and against the inhabitants of Ephod. Kill and devote them to destruction, says the Lord, declares the Lord, I'm sorry, and do all that I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut down and broken. How Babylon has become a horror among the nations. I set a snare for you and you were taken, O Babylon, and you did not know it. And you were found and caught because you oppressed the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and brought out the weapons of his wrath. For the Lord God of hosts has a work to do in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from every corner, quarter. Open her granaries, pile her up like heaps of grain, and devote her to destruction. Let nothing be left of her. Kill all her bulls. Let them go down to, to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment voice. They flee and escape from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, vengeance for his temple. I'm an archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow and camp around her, let no one escape. Repay her according to her deeds, do to her according to all that she has done, for she has proudly defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore her young men shall fall in her squares. And all her soldiers shall be destroyed on that day, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O proud one, declares the Lord. God of hosts, for your day has come, the time when I will punish you. The proud one shall stumble and fall with none to raise him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it will devour all that is around him. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah with them. All who took them captive have held them fast. They refuse to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts it is his name. He will surely plead their cause that he may give rest to the earth, but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword against the Chaldeans, declares the Lord, and against the inhabitants of Babylon, and against her officials and her wise men. A sword against the diviners, that they may become fools. A sword against her warriors, that they may be destroyed. A sword against her horses, and against her chariots, and against all the foreign troops in her midst that they may become women. A sword against all her treasures, that they may be plundered, a drought against her waters, that they may be dried up, for it is a land of images, and they are mad over idols. Therefore, wild beasts shall dwell with hyenas in Babylon, and ostriches shall dwell in her. She shall never again have people, nor be inhabited for all generations, as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities, declares the Lord, so no man shall dwell there, and no son of, of man shall sojourn in her. Behold, the people comes from the north, a mighty nation, and many kings are stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold of bow and, and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring of the sea. They ride on horses, arrayed as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon heard the report of them, and his hands fell helpless. Anguish seized him, pain as of a woman in labor. Behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan against a perennial pasture, I will suddenly make them run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan that the Lord has made against Babylon and the purposes that he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the little ones of their flocks shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble, and her, her cry shall be heard among the nations. Chapter 51, The Utter Destruction of Babylon Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon, against the inhabitants of Leb Kamal. I'm sorry, Leb Kamal. 
and that's spelled L-E-B hyphen K-A-M-A-I. And I will send to Babylon winnowers, and they shall winnow her, and they shall empty her land when they come against her from every side on the day of trouble. Let not the archer bend his bow, and let him not stand up in his armor. Spare not her young men. Devote to destruction all her army. They shall fall down, slain in the land of the Chaldeans, and wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord of hosts. But the land of the Chaldeans is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from the midst of Babylon. Let everyone save his life. Be not cut off in her punishment. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, the repayment he is rendering her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunk and the nations drank of her wine. Therefore the nations went mad. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and has been broken. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her and let us go each to his own country, for her judgment has reached upon, uh, her judgment has reached up to heaven and has been lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows. Take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the, of the kings of the Medes because his purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it for the day, for that is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up watchmen. Prepare the ambushes for the Lord has both planned and done what he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. O oh, you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of hosts is sworn by himself. Surely I will fill you with men as many as many as locusts, and they shall raise the shout of victory over you. It is he who, had, who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At, at the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Not like there is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and his rider. With you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioteer. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I break in pieces the young man and the young woman. With you I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I break in pieces the farmer and his team. With you I break in pieces governors and commanders. I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea before your very eyes for all the evil that they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, declares the Lord, which destroys the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the crags and make you a burnt mountain. No stone shall be taken from, from you for a corner and no stone for a foundation, but you shall be a perpetual waste, declares the Lord. Set up a standard on the earth, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations for war against her, summon against her the kingdoms, Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz, appoint a marshal against her, bring up horses like bristling locusts, prepare the nations for war against her, the king of the Medes with their governors and deputies, and every land under their dominion, the land trembles and writhes in pain, for the Lord's purposes against Babylon stand. To make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant, the warrior of Babylon have, ce have ceased. I'm sorry, the warriors of Babylon have ceased fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their strength has failed. They have become women, but her dwellings are on fire. Her bars are broken. One runner runs to meet another, and one messenger to meet another to tell the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every side. The fords have been seized. The marshes are burned with fire, and the soldiers are in panic. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest will come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me 
He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He has filled his stomach with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. The violence done to me and to my kinsmen. I'm sorry. Had to pause it there. Uh, the violence done to me and to my kinsmen be upon Babylon. Let the inhabitant of Zion say, My blood shall be upon the inhabitants of Chaldea. Let Jerusalem say, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea and make her fountain dry, and Babylon shall become a heap of ruins, the haunt of jackals, a horror and a hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall growl like lions' cubs. While they are inflamed, I will prepare them a feast and make them drunk that they may become merry, then sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and male goats. How Babylon is taken, the praise of the whole earth seized. How Babylon has become a horror among the nations. The sea has come up upon Babylon. She's covered with its tumultuous waves. Her cities have become a horror, a land of drought, and a desert, a land in which no one dwells, and through which no son of man passes. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and take out his mouth what he has swallowed. The nation shall no longer flow to him. The wall of Babylon has fallen. Go out of the midst of her, my people. Let everyone save his life from the fierce anger of the Lord. Let not your heart faint, and be not fearful at the report heard in the land, when a report comes in one year, and afterward a report in another year, and violence is in the land, and ruler is against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming when I will punish the images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be put to shame, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is in them shall sing for joy over Babylon, for the destroyer shall come against them out of the, the north, declares the, the Lord. Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel, just as for Babylon have fallen the slain of all the earth. You who have escaped from the sword, go, do not stand still. Remember the Lord from far away and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are put to shame for we have heard reproach. Dishonor has covered our face as foreigners have come into the holy places of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will execute judgment upon our images and through all our land and, and the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon shall mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, yet destroyers would come from me against her, declares the Lord. A voice, a cry from Babylon, the, the noise of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord is laying Babylon waste, and stilling her mighty voice. Their waves roar like the many waters, the, the noise of their voice is raised, for a destroyer has come upon her, upon Babylon. Her warriors are taken, their bows are broken in pieces, for the Lord is a God of recompense. He will surely repay. I will make drunk her officials and her wise men, her governors, her commanders, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the king whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the broad wall of Babylon shall be leveled to the ground, and her high gate shall be burned with fire. The people peoples labor for nothing, and the nations weary themselves only for fire. The word that Jeremiah the prophet commanded, Sarai, the son of Neriah, son of Masai, Mas I'm sorry, when he went with Zedekiah, king of Judah, to Babylon. In the fourth year of his reign, Sarai was the quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the disaster that should come upon Babylon, all these words that are written concerning Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sarai, when you come to Babylon, see that you read all these words and say, O Lord, you have said concerning this place that you will cut it off so that nothing shall dwell in it, neither man nor beast, and it shall be desolate forever. When you finish reading this book, tie a stone to it and cast it in the middle of the Euphrates and say, Thus shall Babylon sink to rise no more because of the disaster that I am bringing upon her, and they shall become exhausted. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Chapter 52, the fall of Jerusalem recounted. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hanithal, the daughter of, of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. 
For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence, and Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the, in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of, men of war fled and went out from the city by night by the way of the gate between the two walls by the king's garden, and the Chaldeans were around the city. And they went in the direction of the Arabah, but the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from, from him. Then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath. And he passed sentence on him. The king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and also slaughtered all the officials of Judah at Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains. And the king of Babylon took him to Babylon and put him in the, in the prison for the day of his death. The temple burned in the fifth month. On the tenth day of the month, that was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the body guard who served the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down, and all the army of the Chaldeans who were with the captain of the guard broke down all the walls around Jerusalem. And Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away the captive. He carried away captive some of the poorest of the people and the rest of the people who were left in the city and the deserters who had deserted to the king of Babylon together with the rest of the artisans. But Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen and the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord and the stands in the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord. The Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. And they took away the pots and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the basins, and the dishes for incense, and all the vessels of bronze used in the t in temple service, also the small bowls, and the fire pans, and the basins, and the pots, and the lamp stands, and the dishes for incense, and the bowls for drink offerings. What was of gold the captain of the guard took away as gold, and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea, the twelve bronze bowls that were under the sea, and the, and the stands which Solomon the king had made for the house of the Lord. The bronze of all the, these things was beyond weight. As for the pillars, the height of the one pillar was 18 cubits. Its circum circumference was 12 cubits, and its thickness was four fingers, and it was hollow. On it was a capital of bronze. The height of the one capital was five cubits. A network and, and pomegranates, all of bronze, were around the capital, and the second pillar had the same with pomegranates. They were 96 pomegranates on, on the sides. All the pomegranates were 100 upon the network all around. The people exiled to Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Sarai, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war and seven men of the king's council who were found in the city and the secretary of the commander of the army who mustered the people of the land and 60 men of the people of the land who were found in the midst of the city. And Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah in the hand in the land of Hamath. So Judah was taken into exile out of its land. This is the number of the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captives from Jerusalem, 832 persons. In the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away cap captives of the Judeans, 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. Jehoiakim was released from prison. Now, that's not Jehoiakim, there's a Jehoiakim. Um, and in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 25th day of the month, Evel Merodach, king of Babylon, in, in the year 
that he began to reign, graciously freed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seat of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table, and for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king according to his daily needs until the day of his death as long as he lived. And that is the end of our reading for this week. I'm going to recap this, and then we're going to do an altar call and close out the Bible study for this week. So Jeremiah was the second of it, of the major prophets that we've just read. And we're going to also, um, part of the major prophets is the book of Lamentations, which we will do next week. And it was written by Jeremiah as well, with the help of his, his scribe Baruch. Now, um, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah um, was warnings and judgment and failure to repent will lead to destruction, which we know um, occurred. And the book of Jeremiah does not follow a topical or chronological order. And as we read the book, um, the time element is we needed to not... um, worry about the time element unless the time is specifically stated what we need to focus on when when we look at the book of Jeremiah is uh, what Jeremiah deals with in each chapter. He was a prophet that appeared on the scene about a hundred years after Isaiah and he was born into a priestly family at Anathoth a few miles north of Jerusalem around 640 BC. He was the son of Hilkiah and possibly a descendant descendant of Abiathar. So um, the meaning of his name is not totally name, known, but there's possible translations are Yahweh exalts or Yahweh throws. And we know more about his personal life um, than any other prophet. Um, and prior to Jeremiah coming on the scene, the prophet Isaiah had told Judah that judgment was coming upon them because of their sins. And the message of Jeremiah was to let Judah know that the time for judgment had come and that nothing would save them from divine punishment, as we saw. God had commanded Jeremiah not to marry and have children in order to illustrate his message that judgment was imminent for Judah and that the next generation would be swept away. We know Jeremiah had a few close friends. Among those were were Baruch, his his scribe or secretary, and other friends such as Gedaliah, Ahikam, and the Ethiopian ebed Melech. Jeremiah's life was, of course, not an easy one. He was abused by um, by the, the king's prophets and, and the people uh, around the king and including the king. Um, and he had to preach a message to surrender to the Babylonians and his message caused the leaders of Jerusalem to sentence him to death for treason, although he was delivered by Ebed melech the Ethiopian. He's also known as the weeping prophet, the prophet of a broken heart. So. Um, He was rejected, beaten, hated, and imprisoned by his own people. And he wanted to resign from the ministry, but the Lord would not allow him. Um, He felt the fire in his bones. He was the the one prophet that had said that. He he wanted to be quiet and not not talk any more about the Lord, but uh, that was not what he was called to do. So he could not be quiet because the, the Lord, the Lord spoke through him with the prophecies so and we see that in jeremiah's call he put he put the words in into his mouth and the fall of jerusalem and we began um this week with uh, the fall of jerusalem and judah and jeremiah's message for for the remnant continued and looking back to the fall of judah and jerusalem um, the events um, that occurred before the fall of Jerusalem were in chapters 1 to 30, 39, and then 39 started the fall, but also the judgment on the nations uh, were addressed. So Jeremiah was preceded in the ministry by the prophet Zephaniah, who ministered while Jeremiah was very young. Um, and other contemporaries were Nahum, Habakkuk, and Obadiah, 
Ezekiel was a younger contemporary of Jeremiah, and Ezekiel prophesied it in Babylon from 593 until 571 BC. Jeremiah began his ministry during the reign of Josiah, a good king, who delayed God's promised judgment because of the horrible king Manasseh. When Josiah ascended to the throne, he tore down the high places, the, which are the pagan altars, throughout Judah and Samaria. This reform, however, had little lasting effect upon the people, and Josiah was killed at the Battle of Megiddo in 609 BC when he attempted to prevent Pharaoh Necho from going to the aid of the king of Assyria in their attempt to conquer Judah. Josiah was followed by his three sons, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah, as well as a grandson named Jehoiakim. All of these kings were warned by Jeremiah to obey the Lord, but they did not pay heed to the warnings of the prophet. Jehoiakim was openly hostile to Jeremiah, and he destroyed the scroll that Jeremiah sent to him. Instead of obe obeying the prophet and the word of God that was contained in the scroll, Jehoiakim responded by cutting the scroll into bits and pieces and throwing them into the fire. For 40 years throughout the reign of Judah's last five kings, Jeremiah warned the coming disaster and appealed in vain to the nation to turn back to God. And they did not. So we saw what happened. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar broke into Jerusalem, destroyed the city, took the people captive uh, in, into Babylon, and a remnant of people were left. And Nebuchadnezzar actually, um, in, in obedience to God, actually uh, let Jeremiah go. Um, and Jeremiah was offered a comfortable position in the court of Nebuchadnezzar, but he chose instead to remain with the remnant. Um, and when Gedaliah, the governor who was appointed by Nebuchadnezzar, was murdered, the remnant of Jews fled to Egypt, even though they were told not to. And among the prophets, Jeremiah's contemporaries were Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and Daniel, who was carried away to Babylon, and Ezekiel, who was also carried away into Babylon. Jeremiah stood out as a lonely prophet, and hardly anyone wanted to listen to him because he was obedient to God. And he preached to the people of Jerusalem to surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah was branded as a traitor and imprisoned, yet Jeremiah never compromised the word of God. Jeremiah had a heart of compassion for his people, and he prayed for them. Even when God told him not to do so, he condemned the rulers, the priests, and the false prophets for leading the people astray. In his message, Jeremiah attacked the people for their continued idolatry, and he proclaimed severe judgment unless the people repented. And he knew the heart of God, and he obeyed God when he told the people to surrender to the Babylonians. He, because he obeyed the Lord, Jeremiah was branded by the people as a traitor. Despite all of his suffering, Jeremiah remained faithful to the Lord and preached the word of God with boldness. Much of the message priest, preached by Jeremiah is relevant today and is timeless. Sin must, God will always deal with sin unless there is true repentance. The idolatry today because of, of the lust for wealth, pleasure, and position is still sinful in the eyes of God unless we repent and surrender to God Almighty through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Although we call, call sins and, and idolatries by different names today, they're still sinful in the eyes of God. God still calls us today to repent and enjoy the blessings of covenant relationship with him. Sin requires repentance and restoration while obedience leads to joy and blessings. So that is kind of the, you know, the, the take back also from that because the people just did not. They did not repent. They did not relent. They turned on Jeremiah. Now, just to give you a little geographic idea, uh, where is, you know, where Babylon is, um, it, the city of Babylon was located about 50 miles south of Baghdad. So we're talking about Iraq along the Euphrates River. And in, again, this in present day is Iraq. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this very powerful word. And we thank you in, in the fact that even, even though you had brought calamity on the people for, for their sins, you also gave them a hope and a redemption, which you're, you're a merciful God, and we love you for that. 
Father God, we give you all our praise and all, all honor and glory go to you. We thank you for all that you do, all that you're doing, and we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And we're going to do an altar call right now. If you've never given your life to the Lord and you're not, if you're not born again and saved and you would like to do that, um, this is a golden opportunity and you can say a simple prayer with me in just a bit. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ himself because he died for you. He died for me. He died for everyone for sin. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And the consequences of sin is the wages of sin are death and destruction, separation from our creator. And in, in eternity, you won't be in heaven if you have not been born again and saved and redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And that is by Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And yes, I refer to him as Yeshua. That is his Hebrew name. And it actually means salvation. Our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever. He also took our illnesses and afflictions with him. Uh, so when, when the Roman soldiers beat him, um, so we can actually stand on his uh, on the word of God and say, by his stripes, I am healed. So it is your choice. Of course, God gives free will. But our part in this, there is nothing. Jesus took his life when he laid down his life on the cross for us. He took all the sins of the world with him. So we could be redeemed forever. He was the only perfect man to ever, to ever walk the face of the earth. And in the in the Old Testament, in the old in the Old Testament books, we see that um, there was a sacrificial system that was put in place to cover the sins of the people, and there was a lot of of sacrificing of animals that were done, and and actually. That most most of the time it was blemish free perfect lambs. Jesus, this his sacrifice of his life for us was done in love, and it was the final sacrifice that needed to be done. So the path has already been laid down for you. It's your choice to 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 confess your sins, to repent of those sins, and turn away from them, and accept. Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he has taken the consequences of those sins. He paid for it already. So there's nothing that, that you need to do at this point except that. For all of sin and comes short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's Romans chapter 5, verse 8. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. And we can see through history, you know, God saw the sins of the people. Nothing goes unnoticed to God. So, yes, he sees everything that everybody does. But know that you haven't fallen too far that you, you can't be saved. Call in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, and you will be saved. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that can do that. I can't save you. No, uh, no, no one else, no one on this earth can save you. And know there are not many paths that will lead to heaven. That is the broad path that leads to death and destruction. The path is very narrow and it leads to Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords and he will rule and reign forever. He is the only one worthy. So if you would like to be born again and saved and, and understand Jesus taught that we must be born again born of the spirit, not of flesh. Flesh will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
So, we, so that is something that has to happen, and this is how it happens. So if you, if you would like to be born again and saved, you can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner, and I clearly understand I cannot save myself, and there is nothing in this physical world that can either I understand now that the Savior is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He died for me, and I believe he is the Messiah. He died on a cross, he was buried, and he rose again, and he is coming to rule and reign again. Thank you, Jesus, for doing everything that you've done for me. I, I, am, I am asking you to forgive me of my sin. And I am acknowledging you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and acknowledging you as the Messiah and the Savior and the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, including mine. And you paid my sin debt in full. And I am so appreciative. I do accept the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help me to walk a better path. Thank you for cleansing me of my sins and all unrighteousness. I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I am saved, healed, delivered, born again, set free from sin and consequences of sin. And I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul in Jesus. Yeshua's precious mighty name. Amen and Amen. So if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible. We need to separate ourselves from the things of the world because the world is full of false doctrines and lies and um, ideas of men that um, that are being brought into the church and should never be brought into the church. And this is what happened historically to the children of Israel. They they gleaned parts of what was in the world and, 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 and combined them. We're not to do that. How do you know that you're you're in the right place and you're getting fed the right the right information? I would say the best place to start is to get a copy of the Bible. Get a copy of the Bible and begin reading it for yourself. And I'm talking about a hard copy of the Bible. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to get a certain version of the Bible. I am going to tell you to go to Bible Hub or Bible Gateway. Sample out the different versions that are there. There's, there's a multitude of versions that are on both, both sites. And the one that you're most comfortable with is probably the one you're most likely to commit to reading. So I would encourage you to, to, to get a copy of the Bible. You can continue to follow along with our Bible study. Um, and also when you join a local congregation, many of them have Bible studies. I would encourage you to get involved in that. When you sit down to read the Bible uh, individually, pray, uh, invite the Holy Spirit in to lead you and guide you. Holy Spirit is a wonderful teacher. And also develop a prayer life. Uh, you are now a member of the family of God, God of all creation. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And we do this through prayer, through talking to him, directly turning to him, getting guidance from him, because we certainly do want to do what is right in his eyes. Will we be perfect? No. <laughs> None of us are perfect. We will never be perfect. As I said, there is, we're only made perfect and righteous through Jesus, through Yeshua, who is the only perfect person to ever walk the face of the earth. So yes, you will make mistakes along the way. And it's, it's very important to repent of those as soon as you know that you have. Do not let it fester because that gives the evil one ammunition. And we don't ever want to give him ammunition. Jesus died for us so that that so so we have his covering. Amen. Amen. So with that, I'm going to bring um, the Bible study to it to a close for this week.
And I'm going to do that with the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing. This is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak, speak to Aaron and his sons. And, and what he, he wanted to have done, he, he wanted to have them, his name it was to be put on the children of Israel, and he was giving them a blessing. When you're born again and saved, God put, right, puts his name on you. You are his. You belong to him. You're his child now. And he seals you with his Holy Spirit. So this blessing is for, for all members of the family of God now, because if you're born again into the kingdom of God, you're also born again into the commonwealth of Israel. So we're Jew and Gentile in one body of Messiah. So what what Adonai, what God gave uh, to be spoken was a blessing, but there are particular words that are spoken and were to be spoken over the children of Israel. And I'm going to say that blessing now, and we're going to say it in Hebrew first, and then in English. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. It is still early enough in the week to say Shavua Tov. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you. And don't forget we have uh, Tuesday Tuesday evening. We have um, our live session on freeconferencecall.com where you can come meet with us and, and uh, be part of fellowship. And we'd love to have you. Have a, have a great week, everyone. God bless each and every one of you.